Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on Java native interface and look at an interesting topic, which is how we can use jar files in C++ when we are developing uh, JNI applications. So sometimes we need to use some sort of library and we cannot find that functionality in a C++ library, but we do have jars and uh, we are writing a JNI uh, application so we need to have that functionality available in C++ for us as part of our C++ code and in that case we can uh, uh, input a jar file and make it available on the class path at runtime and then uh, because when it's available at runtime JVM is aware of all the classes inside that uh, jar file and then uh, obviously then we can ask JVM to load those classes in C++ and then uh, call any methods inside those classes so that we can get the functionality that we need, right? So we can call or use classes inside jar files when developing JNI applications. We need, put, we need to uh, put the jar file on the class path at runtime. Obviously, uh, when we are developing Java application and we calling uh, classes from jar files, Java C, the Java compiler checks if that class is actually available on the class path at compile time. And if it's not, it doesn't compile your Java code. But when we are using uh, JNI, we don't uh, run uh, basically Java C, right? In C++, we only have access to JVM, basically the runtime. Uh, behavior of Java, right? Uh, JVM is a concept for runtime, right? And therefore, uh, there is no Java C and there is no actual check at com at the time we compile the C++ code, whether the class that we are uh, uh, reaching um, inside the jar file, the jar file is not, it, it doesn't, there is no check from the com C++ compiler at uh, compile time, whether this class is actually available on the class path on the Java class path because uh, GCC, the C++ compiler doesn't know we are actually launching or working with the JVM, right? So that's up to us to guarantee that uh, uh, basically the class is available on the class path at runtime, not compile time, right? And then obviously the step one, we, uh, when we write our uh, C++ code, we ask JVM to find the class on the class path. Remember, JVM is a runtime concept. Therefore, uh, we just have to make sure that at runtime, uh, when we are launching our Java code and it calls this uh, native method, it calls the C++ code, this class is available on the class path so that the JVM can find it. And we use the function, uh, obviously we've been using this for quite some time, find class, and we give it a CS style a string for the class path, right? And uh, in the CS style a string, uh, all the dots are replaced by forward slash. So if it's Maven native, it's the package and then dot and then the class file test Maven Geni. In C++, uh, all the dots are replaced by forward slash. So internally inside JVM, there is no dot. The class path separator is forward slash. In the Java code, the class path separator is actually dot, not forward slash. And they did this uh, distinction so that it, it, it's uh, easier to understand uh, when we refer to a Java code, the syntax in the Java code versus what's internal to the JVM itself, right? JVM find class. If we need an instance of the object, so let's say we want to call a method of that object, but that method is not a static method. It's a regular instance method. So we need to create an instance of that class. So we create an object of that class. So we can call the new object. This calls the constructor of that uh, object. And if we need to pass arguments, we can pass them. And then once we have an instance of that class or uh, once we have uh, all the J class uh, information of that class, we can ask JVM to access any methods inside that object, right? And then uh, JVM calls those uh, methods for us and returns us the result back in C++. And then we can use those results to continue our code in C++. So here's an example. Let's say we developed a, a multi-platform jar. Uh, it was called Maven Native, right? And it had one simple uh, native method, which was multiply. And it was taking two double parameters and multiplying them in C++ and returning the result back in Java as a double, right? And we package this uh, basically in a multi-platform jar. 
and now I'm creating a new project called jar right and it has a class in this class I'm just adding a very simple uh, native method it's called car jar and it's supposed to call this uh, native method multiply inside this uh, jar uh, file that is available on the class path in C++ so I have a multiply method it's a native method it doesn't have to be native method but uh, when we were working, uh, looking at how to make a multi-platform jar, we just uh, defined this multiply function as a uh, native method and we created uh, basically implementation for Windows, Mac, Linux, and then package all of them together in one single jar file uh, using Maven, right? So I have this multiply Java method in some class inside this jar file and then uh, at the compile time I have already added it to the build path right uh, in inside Eclipse and then then it's available both at compile time and runtime but because I'm defining this call jar as a native method it, uh, uh, Java C doesn't uh, check if we need this multiply function at compile time or not right so it's all about the runtime and then when I run Java Edge tool on this test one class that has this native method called jar, it creates the header file and then I implement it in C++. So it returns a J double, right? And then a Java underscore package name, underscore class name, underscore method name. And then uh, I have two parameters, J double X, Y, and I want to call this multiply method inside this jar file. So a step one, J, get the J class of that class, of, of that particular class that is inside this jar file. And that class is uh, test maven geni, and it's inside this package, maven underscore native. And again, in C++, the uh, class path separator is forward slash, right? So the first step is always get the J class, which has the meta information of whatever class that we want to work with. And then in a step two, we know that we want to call a method inside that class and it's a static method, right? So I don't need to actually create an instance of this class. I don't need to have an object. So I just get the method ID of that particular method multiply, which is a static. So I say JVM get a static method ID. Get a static method ID passing the J class that has the meta information, the name of the method, the parameter type, and then the return type of this multiply. So this class is inside the jar file, right? Note that there is no notion of what is the name of the jar file or whatever, because when we add a jar to a class path, we're just adding those packages that are inside the jar file to the class path, right? So it doesn't matter what the name of the jar is. JVM doesn't know. JVM only knows what packages are on the class path at runtime and what classes are inside those packages, right? JVM, when I tell it go into this package and get this class, it tries to do that. If it cannot find it on the class path, it just uh, throws an exception, class def error or class not found error or something like that. So we get the J class of that class inside the jar file. We get the method uh, ID of the method that we want to call. It's a static method, so get a static method ID. Now that we have both the meta information from J class and also the method ID, we ask JVM to actually call this method multiply of this uh, test maven geni class, which is inside this package, and this package is inside our jar file. So J double result, JVM call a static, it's a static method, and it returns a primitive, and we specify the type of the primitive of that return type, which is double. Call a static double method which means this is a static method and returns a primitive double. If it was returning object, we say call a static object method, which means it's a static method that returns an object type. But here it returns a primitive double. We pass the J class, we pass the method ID, and then we pass the parameters that that uh, method requires. We pass in two J doubles, and these are the parameters to our function itself. And this returns a J double and we just return it back to uh, Java, all right? So basically I create a jar file or ha I have some sort of jar file. I could just download it from Maven or whatever. And now I need to call one of the methods inside one of the classes in C++. So I just make sure that jar file is available on the class path. And then I ask JVM to find it on the, uh, on the class path for me at runtime. And then I get the method ID or whatever I need from that class. I may need to instantiate it. And then I call some sort of method. It returns some 
value it could be a j object or a j primitive type like j boolean j double and then i can continue working with that in c plus plus so let's head to eclipse and try to have a closer look so we had this uh, maven native and maven native c and this maven native had a uh, package maven underscore native and we had this class test maven geni and it had one native method multiply and then we made it multi-platform by checking the OS and uh, creating the dynamic libraries for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And then we use native utils so that we can package these dynamic libraries inside the jar itself. And then, uh, so, and then native utils copies those. Uh, at runtime, it copies the appropriate dynamic library outside the jar into a uh, temporary folder so that JVM can load it, right? And then, uh, um, uh, and then we package everything inside this jar file, right? So in Maven, we copy all the dynamic libraries that are resources to the resources folder and then the class files, and then uh, it package all of them into the jar file. And then I create this uh, Java project called jar. I have a package called jar. It has test one. In test one, uh, I'm loading the dynamic library that is supposed to be associated with this uh, class and that's just because I have a native method so in order to execute this native method I should have a dynamic library that provides the implementation right and as you can see I have this jar file and uh, let me just remove it from the uh, build path so I create this lib folder and then I copy and paste this uh, jar file multi-platform jar into my lib and then right click build path add to build path so it's now available at compile time and, and run time in uh, my uh, development in my java project right but I'm not going to do anything with it at compile time because I'm just uh, having a native method but I want to use this uh, test maven JNI class and call this native method inside that class inside the C++ implementation of this native file, right? Native method. So I create a call jar underscore C. This is my C++ project that is implementing the native method of the call jar project. And then uh, uh, basically I select my test one and uh, I, my Java class that has a native method and run my Java edge tool. And then it creates the header file, puts it in the header folder of the C++. All right, and then uh, uh, if I go to the C++ perspective, I have the header file, and then I create in the source folder, I create a CPP file and add the implementation. The first thing that we do as always, we include that header file, and also we include the JDK uh, folders the, uh, that so that we can access the JNI.h, okay? And these are the routines, and then here, as you can see, I have this jar file available on the class path of my Java project. So I ask JVM to find that class and that class is, uh, is inside this. Note that the name of the jar file doesn't matter. It's only the packages inside that jar file. So this test Maven JNI class is inside a package called Maven underscore native. And then the uh, pa class path separator in C++ is forward slash and then the name of the class. Note that we don't use any dot class uh, uh, extension right it's just the name of the class and then inside this test maven jni there is a native method there's a method called multiply which is a static method it doesn't matter if it's native or not right native just tells jvm okay there is no implementation in java so go look for a, a dynamic library that has the implementation of this method right but uh, here it doesn't matter if it's native or not we need to call this method but it matters if it's static or not. So I know that it's a static method. So I ask JVM to get a static method ID. And because it's a static method, I don't really need to create an instance of this class, a, an instance object of this class. I just work with the J class and J method ID, call a static double method, J class, J method ID, and then the parameters. A static method ID, it, ta it takes whatever parameters it needs to take. So we pass in two J doubles which are the parameters arguments here and then it returns back a j double and then i just return that to uh, java all right so and then we build this it uh, creates a dynamic library i create a new folder inside my java project which is called gni and then we copy and paste that dynamic library inside this and then we right click 
go to properties and then uh, 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 actually we need to go to the Java uh, perspective and then uh, we right click on the project build path configure build path in the source we go to we click on this uh, native library location edit and then workspace and we specify this JNI folder so that uh, it tells the Eclipse automatically behind the scene sets the hyphen D Java dot library dot path to this folder all right and then uh, once we have the JNI here and then we can go back to our original test one which had this native library called jar and then uh, if I call it pass 1.1 2.2 it should return the result so let's run this yeah it's even so notice what happens this example a little bit more convoluted because the method that we are calling inside this jar file inside the class inside jar file it's or it's also a native method so it loads another dynamic library but we don't care right we don't care how this method is implemented multiply all we care is that there is a method inside the class and I can load the I can call it in C++ and that method can do some work for me do some calculations or whatever and it can give me back a result in C++ and I can continue working with that result right now if I go here and uh, um, uh, remove this jar from the build path again at compile time uh, the Java C doesn't complain because it doesn't know that this native method actually needs that jar file right if uh, basically I was using that uh, uh, the classes inside that jar file at uh, um, at somewhere inside the Java itself then Java C can check for it and complain that hey I cannot find this class on the class path at compile time but because this is native, Java C just says, okay, I don't know what's going to happen to the implementation of this native method, but it's all deferred to runtime, right? So if I run this, uh, JVM crashes, that's just because it's trying to uh, find this uh, class on the class path, but it cannot find it, so it just uh, crashes, right? and uh, you can go through the uh, here uh, the point that it crashes is when it tries to call this method and uh, uh, it's just uh, not able to find this class so again if i add this to the class path add, so that uh, jvm has no problem finding this class on the class path this uh, code should work yes all right so all we have to do is we have to make sure that the class is available on the class path and then we ask the JVM to find it and then from there it's just a regular JNI, right? We can call any methods inside the, any class inside that jar file. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.